This is gonna be a great know the cause. I'm talking a little bit about, well, we know drugs can increase your risk of diabetes and other diseases, cancer, for example. But would a popular diet increase your risk of diabetes? Also, we'll uh, do a little discovery in the opening of today's Know the Cause. Then Dr. Fred Pescatori, as the show moves down toward the end, is gonna talk to us about the brain that we have here and the brain that we have here, the gut-brain link, okay? I love this guy. He's from uh, New York. Then Texas physician, Dr. Soraya, is going to talk to us about an amazing testimonial Folks, when you begin looking for fungus, you find it all over the place, including the lungs. All that and more on today's Know the Cause. Today's Know the Cause is brought to you by Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics. Discover the Dr. O'Hara difference. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. So I spoke to a group of doctors last year. I gave them this continuing medical education. We talked about supplementation. We talked about diet and so forth. And a couple of them said, I no longer do gluten tests. I don't do gluten tests on my patients. I just tell them, here's a diet. Follow the gluten-free diet. Folks, we're in trouble when we do that. Now, let me tell you that in the past, you know my background. In the past, I have said, be careful of corn. Even seeds, be careful of corn because they're riddled with these fungal mycotoxins and some dangerous ones. Then I talked a little bit about peanuts and so forth. The new kid on the block as far as uh, mycotoxin poisoning is wheat. So it makes total sense to me that all of you are staying away from wheat and you're feeling good. Here's the problem with that versus what we call the gluten diet. Staying off wheat, I think, is brilliant, especially if it's impregnated with these molds, okay? But the gluten diet, let's talk a little bit about that, okay? A major study by Harvard University suggests that ingesting only small amounts of protein or avoiding it altogether increases the dangers of diabetes by as much as 13%. Okay, if you're a, a student or a professor of glutenopathy, you're, you're uh, someone who follows this diet, you're saying, wait a minute, what's Harvard talking about protein? I can eat eggs, I can eat chicken, you know, I can eat nuts on the gluten-free diet. What are they talking about? And it didn't make sense to me either, but I wanted to raise your bar of awareness a little bit. I don't worry about diabetes at all with the gluten diet. I don't care what Harvard says. What I worry about is cancer or other diseases if you're following this diet. Just hear me out. I know there's a lot of you who are advocates of the gluten diet, okay? Researchers behind the study have suggested that people that limit their gluten intake who are not celiac patients should think again and pointed out there's no evidence that going gluten-free has any health benefits and there's where I got this out of England. It almost seems as though if we the people love something, a supplement, a program, a diet, that boy, the big boys with all the credentials are going to come out against it, unless it's something not named after a doctor. The Adkins diet, I knew Dr. Adkins, we were buddies, we had breakfast many times together, but they poo-pooed him because he was getting wealthy on it. The Mediterranean diet, wait a minute, that's a whole different thing. That doesn't have a name on it. We love the Mediterranean diet, okay? But along comes a Kaufman diet. Trust me, it's only a matter of time. As we get bigger, they're gonna say, boy, that Kaufman's a quack, just like they did Adkins. But they poo-poo things that seem to be working. Instead of being real scientists and figuring it out, what is it about this gluten diet that so many people are feeling better? They're poo-pooing it. Well, you have to stay away from protein. No, you don't, Harvard. Eat plenty of protein on the gluten diet. So come again. Tell us what you object about it this time. So now they're saying, well, if you have to stay, you know, intake, your gluten intake, you don't have, you're avoiding gluten and you're not a celiac patient, then there's no evidence that gluten-free has any health benefits. Look, there's no evidence oxygen has any benefits, right? Uh, but it does. I know it does, okay? My take, people are following a gluten-free diet and feeling great, but the great effects are short-lived because sugar is gluten-free, corn's gluten-free, peanuts are gluten-free. Corn and peanuts are the most impregnated foods in the world with mycotoxins. 
But let's take it a step. I didn't know this. You guys on the gluten diet, did you know this? Alcohol, Myers rum, Jack Daniels, brandies, Jose Cuervo tequila, Smirnoff vodka, and 34 brands of beer are gluten-free. Shame on you, you teetotalers. I thought you weren't drinking on the gluten diet. Now, final slide. Avoiding wheat, rye, and barley is about 5 to 10% of what should be avoided if you'd like to challenge the fungal mycotoxin cause of your illness, which I think many illnesses, including cancer and diabetes, are. Corns, peanut, and sugar must be avoided, folks. Sugar feeds the yeast that corn and peanuts might start. What's wrong with alcohol? I think I'd be better to answer that what's right with alcohol. Alcohol, scientifically Harvard, alcohol is linked to what, seven different kinds of cancers and heart disease and diabetes, and yet, folks, it's legal. You can drink it, the researchers can drink it, your doctor can drink it, so it's totally, totally legal. Uh, the past few years, I've taken a total different look at alcohol in general. I've always felt corn and peanuts are commonly impregnated with mycotoxins, easy to stay away from. Alcohol is a whole nother thing. All I'm asking you to do is not listen to American Heart, American Cancer, American Everything Association, and say that drinking in moderation is okay, right? What I'd like you to do is consider not drinking at all. A year from now, you're gonna thank me. You know, the, the doctor sitting to my left, your right, on TV, is a very special man. He is capable of helping far more patients than he was one year ago. He is board certified. This is a tough one by itself. In, in uh, uh, pulmonology, he's also board certified in internal medicine, uh, sleep medicine, all sorts of certifications. He's got more degrees than a thermometer. And in the past year, He's learned something new, and he has a patient, not here with us, but a videotape of this patient testimonial that you just have to hear. So welcome aboard, Dr. Mukesh Saraya, my buddy of the past year since we met. Thank you, Doug. Um, so uh, Kathy, uh, I met Kathy uh, a few months ago. Uh, she has a farm in Ecuador, and mm -hmm. uh, I think she has family in Denton, so she was kind of coming back and forth, and she ended up in my hospital with uh, history going back uh, 16, 17 months of a cough that just wasn't going away. Uh, she came to me with a CAT scan that showed some nodules, some mosaic kind of picture, nothing specific, but, you know, something going on there. And she had been seen by numerous doctors, you know, put on antibiotics and so on. So when she comes in, you know, there was nothing else for me to do but just find out what the problem was. So we, we did an endoscopy and comes up the culture of aspergillus along with... Um, a mycobacterium avium complex, both of which can lead to the uh, the CT reports that we saw, which was nodules and so on. So it, we chose to treat the fungus first. And uh, so we put her on, on um, um, hydroconazole or Sporinox. She flies back to, to uh, Ecuador, does well for a few weeks, uh, and then starts getting congested again. So she comes back to me. Uh, again, sounded very congested, so we went and scoped her again with the same results this time. Uh, in terms of cultures. But what we did this time, different from what we did the first time. When you culture her, do you find a fungus growing in there? Uh, yes. Okay. So basically, we had to wait on the culture reports you right. know, before they come Couple through. Of weeks, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. So once, we, we identi once she came back and we identified again what was going on with her, I put her on the, on the Kaufman diet or the phase one diet along with colloidal silver. Mm -hmm. and colorex. Mm -hmm. uh, and you had just mentioned colorex in, in one of your emails, you know, mm -hmm. um, a, a cystic fibrosis patient taking it. So I said, we have nothing to lose, you know, give this a try. So she comes back after the second drunk into, uh, you know, again, each time she's flying back to Ecuador, you know, and she lives in a farm uh, that is surrounded by trees and, you know, banana, uh, you know, trees and so on. And, and also has been flooded. So, you know, we gave her some, some uh, mold kits to kind of look at and she was full, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the home was full of the spores. Wow. So basically, even with that exposure, you know, when she came back this third time, she was like a new person. She says her family does not recognize her from where she was. I mean, her color looks so much pinker. She's breathing better. And this was a clear, as, as clear as any lung could be, you know, let's, that uh, had seen her. Let's take a look at Kathy right now. You folks decide this is really good. Watch. I was sick 
for 14 months before I saw Dr. Soraya in, and I was in Ecuador at the time. I came back to see him. He did a um, bronchoscopy and found fungal infection in my lungs. He started treating me with medication. I got a little better and then came back again, still not well, and he did a second bronchoscopy, but also the first time put me on a diet, and the second time a follow-up from the diet, we've seen a difference, but the second treatment was also colloidal silver which has made such a difference. I would say that I'm well at this point. And the Colorex, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, all of the, the supplements that they've recommended, the air purifiers, everything that they've recommended has been such a difference. And I would say it's more the natural remedies that's made the difference than the pharmaceutical <laughs> medications, but that's my opinion. I love her happiness. And it wasn't like that a couple of years ago when she was hacking and coughing. A patient's worried when they cough and cough and cough and run from doctor to doctor to doctor and get handed steroids and antibiotics. That's not who he is anymore. Dr. Mikesh Saraya is her doctor. What changed it? Well, I think uh, being aware that this is not simply uh, 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 organism that just there, you know, it's not an innocuous, you know, as is claimed, you know, Fungus, by, yeah. yeah, it's it's not just a pathogen. I mean, it is a pathogen. It's not just a colonized, you know, organism. And also being aware that antifungals by itself is not the answer. You know, it takes, it takes a village to kind of make this happen. You know, you've got to do everything. You know, I think, I believe, I'm firmly believing in the last two, three months experience that I have, the diet is the number one, you know, reason why she's better. And I truly believe that while we have to treat with pharmaceuticals, they are to be used only as a, as a, as a temporary stop measure until we are able to change your environment, you know, clean up your environment, clean up your food supply, you know, and, and do the whole thing. Without which, you know, up until I met you, Doug, I, that's what I was practicing, was, was antifungals at the most, you know, and not really looking at the environment. Here's a doctor who used the T word, temporary, with drugs. Most doctors don't. P word, permanent, with drugs. Until you clean up your environment, be it your house, you know, be it the office, until you clean up your diet, until you get on good, healthy supplements, medication is a P word, permanent. Listen to what the good doctor said. Thank you and thank Kathy for well, us. That was a great Thank you, Doug. Day. You bet. Well, it's always a good day on Know the Cause when Dr. Fred Pescatori from New York City comes to Texas and joins us. Thank you for coming in and joining us. Thank you for having me, Doug. I've seen your name on so many best-selling lists, and I predict we're going to see it again with the new book, The A-List Diet. Teach me what's in this book. What's in that book? It's, yeah. it's, it's the latest, greatest nutritional science there is known to man as of, as of today. Um, it's, you're gonna learn how to lose weight, you're gonna learn how to eat right, you're gonna learn about different foods, you're gonna learn about how amino acids, which is really what that A stands for, oh. how amino acids will make a world of difference in your health and in how you can supercharge your metabolism and just the overall goodness that amino acids do for you. Do you find, like I do, nutrition is so rapidly changing? Changes all the time, You could be doing it? a book every six months. Especially now, yeah. which is so nice. I mean, when we first started this, yeah. back, you know, when the earth was cooling, I mean, we had something new come out once a year. Now, every, on my email list, it's Every comes day. constantly, every day, every single day. So the it's amazing. The book is subtitled, Lose 15 Pounds, Up to 15 Pounds, Look and Feel Younger in Just Two Weeks. I know his age. So this is the right guy to write this book. Absolutely amazing. I've known you for a lot of years. In this book, you kind of jump off a few times on probiotics. Sure. You uh, talk about the fibers, the benefits, the systemic assistance. We tend to think we swallow something, so we're going to benefit right here. But you talk about this really being more systemic. 
teach us a little bit about probiotics, why they're necessary. Should only people who have taken antibiotics take them? Should sure. we all take well, them? Well, I mean, the reason why I talk about it so much in a book, especially in a, in a health and nutrition wellness diet book, however mm -hmm. you want to describe those words, mm -hmm. Um, you really have to detoxify first, right? You have to clean up, I've always said this, I've said it for years, you have to clean up your internal environment. And our internal environment is what makes the rest of us feel good. So a probiotic is not for a stomach ache, it's not for indigestion, it's not for heartburn. You know, all of those buzzwords, uh, constipation, diarrhea, all those things we associate with our gut. Yep. Well, guess what, our gut affects our brain. It affects how we think, it affects how we sleep, how we feel, what our mood is. It affects our cardiovascular system because of the oxidative stress that is caused when the food you're eating, you're not getting the nutrition from the food you're eating. And that's the beauty of something like Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. I mean, there are a lot of probiotics on the market, let's face it. Yeah. Yeah. But not one that's a live system, doesn't need to be refrigerated, it's got prebiotics, these bugs have been learning to live together for years and years. They've been naturally fermented together for years. Uh, there's postbiotics after that. So it's got the food that they need to, to work together. It creates, you know, short chain fatty acids. I mean, we can go, the science is endless on this, which is another thing why I, yeah, I yeah. love about them. <clears throat> and I've got to tell you, Dr. Pescatori, when I first started talking about probiotics many years ago, I talked about people taking them because your gastroenterologist doesn't know. So if you have ulcerative colitis, tummy problems, it might be a good idea, but always check with your doctor. I'm now finding, you know, we're, uh, this is still a unique one on the market. Isn't oh. that amazing? Still, still, you know, 10, 12 years later. I'm finding that people benefited far outside of their tummies by swallowing this. I mean, how does that work? Is that what you're talking about, postbiotic? Well, what it, well, how it works is that it provides the body with the nutrients that it needs in order to be healthy. And that's where, that's where the term postbiotics comes in. So it's not just the prebiotic, it's not just the, you know, it's not just the probiotic, but it's also what happens, what happens after I take that? Yeah. And that's when you start seeing the systemic effects. That's when you start seeing everything happening from head to, I mean, all of these things, nutritional supplements work head to toe. Yeah, I'm taking a couple of probiotics now. I'm taking Dr. O'Hara's. I've been loyal to this company as long as they've been advertising. When you learn about Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, you just look at other probiotics differently. But I am taking the new one, the Regactive also, because yeah. of the liver. Right. I mean, there was a time in my life, everybody worries about fatty liver. There was a time in my life when I might have imbibed too much. Can you fix that liver? You bet you can, and that's exciting. Yeah, both, no, both Regactive products. is great. It's a specific probiotic that helps produce glutathione. And but glutathione's an amazing substance in the it body. It is, indeed. And the thing I want to drive home is don't, don't stop taking this when you start taking Reg Active. Maintain your loyalty to this. Start the probiotics. And let me just tell you something. You see on this table here, we've got a book, and we've got two of the 60 counts of Dr. O'Hara probiotics. You buy two of these. This book, Dr. Dr. O'Hara, Dr. Pescatore's book is coming to you free of charge. That's, That's great. great. Everybody needs to read that book. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Welcome to another Kaufman Diet Recipe. Today this recipe is called Meatballs and Marinara Sauce. It's considered a phase one meal on the Kaufman Diet. On Know the Cause, we always use the freshest organic ingredients. For the sauce, you will need two tablespoons of olive oil, one small onion, finely chopped, about three-fourths cup, three to five garlic cloves, minced, three tablespoons of tomato paste, two large 28 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes, one teaspoon dried oregano, one teaspoon dried thyme, sea salt and pepper to taste. For the meatballs, you will need one pound of lean ground meat, grass-finished beef, chicken, or turkey, one large egg, slightly beaten, one medium onion, finely chopped, half cup Italian parsley, chopped, a fourth cup heavy whipping cream, half cup quinoa flakes, one teaspoon of sea salt, and finally a fourth teaspoon of pepper. To make the sauce, 
Heat olive oil in large pot over medium to medium high heat. Saute onion for three to five minutes until translucent. Add garlic and saute one minute more. Add tomato paste, stir and cook for another minute. Stir and crush tomatoes. Season with salt and pepper, oregano and thyme and simmer for 25 minutes. To make the meatballs, in a large bowl, we mix together ground meat, egg, onion, parsley, heavy cream, quinoa flakes, salt, and pepper. Mix with hands and form 12 uniform meatballs. After the sauce has simmered for 25 minutes, drop the meatballs in the sauce. Place in one layer, give them a little room. Cover with lid and let simmer for about 15 minutes until meatballs are cooked through. Serve over steamed vegetables, spaghetti squash, or spiraled zucchini. Isn't that interesting how the gut affects the brain, we're all interconnected. Thank you so much, Dr. Fred Pescatori. This is the product, Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics. I swallowed two of them this morning after breakfast. This is a product I've been on for many, many years. Yeah, the brain really does work pretty well. As an old guy, I can still think, that's a good thing. Thank you so much, Dr. Soraya, for coming in. And thank you, Kathy, for that testimony. 16 months of coughing and then poof. You know what I'm saying, folks? Fungus plays a huge role in gut disorders and in lung disorders and in brain disorders and in skin disorders. I have no axe to grind with a gluten diet. I have no extra to grind with any diet, paleo diet, any diet, as long as it's the Kaufman version of that diet, okay, just so you know. And I hope you enjoyed those meatballs today. Folks, the show is all about a better understanding of why you're sick. Very often, fungus has been totally overlooked or misdiagnosed in the medical community. God bless you, God bless them. I'll see you next time, bye-bye.